Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sophia. Today we're going to work on the side muscles. We're going to do many, many lateral exercises. And on the Mary Sue machine that I have right here, I'm going to work all the way through on a 2-2 setup. So gear bar on second position and the stopper is also on the second position. And for resistance, I'm going to put on one heavy spring. That's a red spring on this machine and one white spring. So that's your lightest spring. You can do this with just one heavy spring if you want to make it a little bit easier, or you can do it with one heavy and one half spring if you want to make it a little bit harder. And we're going to adjust later. So first, just set, sit down for your mermaids, classic mermaids. Your One of your legs is going to be at the front. The other foot is going to be right at the back. If you need to sit up on a platform or something elevated to make your hips be able to go down, then you can absolutely do that. Now, I don't need it myself, but if you do, just take your time, go ahead and get it. Now, one of your hands is on the shoulder rest, the other hand is right on that foot bar. Make sure it's not too far back. Have a nice 45 degree angle in your arm. Zipping up the tummy, sitting tall, engage, and raise your arm, making sure that this doesn't also raise, right? Just lift the arm. Start bending over even before you start pushing. This will make it easier to do correctly. And then you're gonna start pushing the bed out. Big stretch to the side. Rising back up, bringing the bed in at the same time or before. Lower the arm down, lift, and then stretch the other way. Big stretch as far as you can stretch without lifting either of your butt cheeks. And lift, start bending before you start pushing. Push only as far as your butt cheek stays down on the seat, no matter whether you're sitting on an elevated platform or not. Arm down, and then the other way. Big stretch. Reach, 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 and down. Stretch, keep that butt cheek down. And then the other way. One more round, lift, bend a little bit before you stretch. Keep it there. And now we're gonna, second warm up, we're gonna open the heart, open the arm up to the side, and then twist under, looking under the arm, and try to hold your bed in the meantime. Really carving out the belly as you're twisting under. Breathe in and breathe out here. Feel like you're pulling up your belly button back into your spine, right here, big back stretch. Twisting up, twisting under, two more. Sorry for my hair being in my face, but I can't really put it up now because it just looks silly when I do it. All right, back to mermaid right there, shoulder away from the ear, big stretch, coming back in down and then big stretch one more time the other way mm. all right now this was your warm-up we're going to go into the full first challenge so make sure you're having one heavy spring and one light spring together or one heavy and one half spring so red and white or red and blue sitting down stacking your knees up on top of each other if you have your platform please just put that on the side now and you gotta stack your knees up also against the shoulder blocks. I'm gonna hold on to the uh, foot bar a little bit at the front, even more so than with the mermaids. And from here, I'm gonna push myself up into a side plank, basically, that you have to be straight like a plank. So no sticking the booty out, none, nothing is sticking out, just like when you have a plank, nothing is sticking out. It's straight and flat, right? So zipping up the tummy, squeeze, squeeze, and you're gonna push and raise your arm out to the side and bring it back in. My hand is not far forward enough, so I'm adjusting, that's okay. Push, squeeze your butt super hard, and back. Now, what I always tell my clients to do is go out to the point where you start shaking, but you don't lose form. So I'm making sure that I'm challenging myself going to the point where my whole body is in a bit of a shake, shake, shake situation, but I'm not collapsing. I'm not popping the shoulder. I'm not dropping the hips. 
and so on. So make sure you keep screening through your body. Go through your checkpoints. What are your checkpoints? Number one, shoulder. Don't push with your shoulder, push with your big back muscles here on the side. We call lats, latissimus dorsi. If you wanna be really profesh, checkpoint number two, abdominals on. Checkpoint number three, ribcage closed. That's my big one, I always have issues with that. And check number four, checkpoint number four, your glutes. Are they squeezing? Do you feel like you're pinching a coin with your butt cheeks? Hopefully, all those checkpoints are on fire. One more. Now I'm gonna stay here, one hand to the back of your head. I'm gonna bend my spine and bring the carriage in, lifting the hip. And I'm gonna bend my spine the other way and push the carriage out. So I'm lifting the hip one way, bending the spine this way, and then push and drop. Lift and crunch. For me, it's my left side, and I'm crunching my right side. Crunching my left, crunching my right, you see? And don't do this with your shoulder. Does this look great to you? Uh-uh. Check on it. Crunch, crunch. Breathe in and out. I tried to figure out the best way to breathe here, but then I realized it's either way, actually. They both make sense. Two more. You got this. Don't give up. Oi. And push. Bring it in. And sit down. Great. Now we're going to be kneeling up onto the center of the carriage, feet hanging off, knees about hip distance apart, and I'm taking off the red spring. That's my heavy spring, and I'm only keeping the light spring, the white spring. Yeah, so now we're gonna zip up the tummy again. Always be zipping, also always be squeezing the booty. Picking up your front strap, and we're gonna slip, for me, left hand in, so it's your opposite hand from the shoulder block. Zip, 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 squeeze, close that rib cage, collarbones are smiling, and you can put your hand behind your back or on your hip, whichever is more comfortable to you or whichever feels right, or you could even lower down here. Either way, just be organized. Straight out to the side and feel like your arm is reaching and growing out of your heart. Always away from the center. That's right. Out of center, away from center. Two more. By the way, with these, you could always do less reps if you want, because these are pretty hardcore. Now bring it into a 90 degree, turn it in just about halfway, and then halfway out. Your elbow should pretty much stay below your shoulder, right there. But if you find yourself moving your elbow too much, then you can do a different option where you stick the elbow all the way down on your waistline, which is not the perfect angle, but it's a really good training angle for your elbow to stay in the right place and to train yourself to not move it. Mm-hmm. Great. Now that we survived that one, big spine twist. Make a big circle with your arms. If you've ever done ballet, it's pretty much ballet first position. Nice big circle, rolling the shoulders back, zip, close, and twist the spine. Making sure that you're twisting from the waistline up only. It's perfect if you have high-waisted leggings because that's exactly your, your line where you should be separating your upper body from the lower body. From the leggings down, everything stays the same. You do not twist the hips. From the leggings up, you twist. Shoulders relaxed. Now, how do you make sure that you don't twist these two? Because I see that all the time, even with just the white spring, people usually go ahead and twist the hips as well. Now, if you squeeze your butt so hard, you feel like it's going to break, then your hips will not twist. And feel like you're growing nice and tall. Every single rep makes you taller. You could also hold the, the strap like this 
for some people it's more comfortable. That's absolutely valid. Why not? And I'm talking, I'm not paying attention to my form. The two are really hard to do together, let me tell you. All right, now give it a quick shake. Lovely. I'm going to bring it back to my opposite hand from the shoulder block and I'm going to stick my elbow out right there to the side. Again, hand on the hip or hand at the back and you're just going to extend the arm and bring it back in. You do not want to move the elbow in and out like that. That's cheating in my book. So keep it pointing to the side and it's just an extension and a flexion. That's all. Just one more. This is pretty hard. One more time. Good job. Now it's time to change the straps. This kneeling series and what comes after is what I call the mean seven. It's something I do in my group classes every few weeks and people absolutely love them. And by that, I mean they absolutely hate it. Now, elbow down here. Again, this hand is either down here or back here. With this one, I like hanging my arm down just because my shoulder is completely dead by now. So I'm just letting it relax, zip, close, squeeze, bending over, big stretch, and back. Now I'm doing this in a way that I barely see my arm over my head, so it's pretty far out of my vision. That will challenge your ribcage stability more. The further up you take your arm, the more this wants to open up. So if that's a bit too hard for you to control, you can absolutely just do this in front of your head a little bit. That's cool. I just prefer a bit of more of a challenge and a bigger stretch. So I'm taking it far up over my head. Great, two more. This one feels really good. I like the rest. <laughs> That's it. And now keep that strap in your hand for a level one option. Step off your bed on the side in a really wide foot position. Go wider than you think you need to because then we're going to bring that strap in between the boobs, your chest, in the center of the chest. You're going to drop down and just shift your body weight side to side. Now try to do this without bending over. With not bending over, I want to stay upright straight. Also, no up and down. Don't bounce like this. Stay on the same level and shift. Shift. Push your hips forward. Stay upright. Now I'm going to change to a level two option. If you want to make it harder, you change to the front strap. That will pull you forward more. So it's more challenging to stay upright. So you need more, more muscle work. It's up to you which one you want to do. Opening your knees, staying upright, zipping up the tummy. Elbows up. Does this look great? Mm -mm. Make it look good. If it looks good, usually it means you're doing it correctly. And now we're going to start twisting. Twist, twist. My hand doesn't move from here. Twist, twist. Keep the hip open. No bending over. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Two more. Last one. Bring it back to center. And done. This is one side down. Let's move to the other side. All right, now that you turned around, set up for your mermaids again. So that will mean either one heavy spring, that's the red spring, or a red and a white spring, or red and a blue spring. You choose one hand on the foot bar, not too far back. The other hand is on the shoulder block. Open that heart. Raise your arm. Bend over before you start pushing. Push. Long stretch on the side. Rising back up. Stacking the spine up. Arm down. And then stretch the other way. Your rib cage. It's very hard for me too, trust me. I love flaring my rib cage. <laughs> Lift, we do Pilates to make it better, right? 
We don't do Pilates and pretend that we are perfect. We are not perfect. Reach down and then the other way. Big stretch. Really give yourself the stretch on the side. Stacking up vertebrae by vertebrae. Down. Bend before you push. Take your time. Don't rush this one. It's such a lovely stretch and there's no point rushing it. One more round. Lift. Push before you bend. Long stretch. Make sure your shoulders are not looking like this. Elbow is not looking like this. Softer. Bring it in. Stack up. And then the other way. Long stretch. Now, staying out by the bar. Flexing over. Shoulders relaxed. Inhale. Open up to the ceiling. Exhale. Twisting under. Trying to look under your arm. Hold the belly, inhale. And when you're turning under, make sure you're pushing that belly button gently back into the spine, pulling it up from the leg, creating a side C curve in the spine, see? If I didn't do that, then my spine would be straighter and I would be forced to lift my opposite butt cheek while I'm twisting around. This is not what we want, why? Because it just doesn't give you sufficient amount of stretch also, it doesn't teach you to isolate upper body from lower body. So try to push your butt cheek down. Inhale up. Suck up that belly button. Big stretch. And up. Yummy. Two more. One more time. Big twist under. And back. Back to mermaid. Bring the bed in. Stacking up. Down. And then stretch the other way. Now I did this with just the red spring, so I'm going to add back the white spring. I have a red and a white in total, just like we did on the other side. Take off your platform if you're using one, stack your knees up on top of each other and against the shoulder blocks. From there, we're going to push up into what I like to call the side plank, zipping up the tummy, zip, 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 squeeze, 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 always. And I can feel that this knee is not in the right position. So I'm gonna adjust, please do take your time adjusting because this position is uncomfortable as it is, right? So you don't wanna make it even more uncomfortable by just not getting it right because that's gonna take off away all your attention from more important things. So I'm still not right. There we go. I got it now. Now, zipping up, squeezing the tummy, adjusting leggings, closing the rib cage, shoulders down, and make sure that this elbow is not locking out. This is your biggest enemy if this happens, because once you lock the elbow out, you don't only put pressure in the elbow joint, but even in your wrist and your shoulder. You see that? The whole thing is just a chain reaction disaster. So you wanna soften, soften, stabilize down, and there's no more pressure on my wrist this way. Right, if your hand hurts, by the way, holding the bar, you could fold up something like a sticky mat folding up or something that's softer and put it under your hand. This is a common thing that I see that people have pain here from the bar, so. You're welcome to do, put something underneath. Again, make sure it hurts in the right places, not in the wrong places. Now again, zip, close, sorry, we're starting again, but I had to explain the arm. Squeeze that booty, arm down and push. And back. Like we discussed it on the other side, go to the point where you start shaking, but you don't lose form. So you don't look like this, Again, see the elbow looking out, down there. And you also don't drop the hip back. But you do shake because you want to challenge yourself. Hoy. Zip up from the knee all the way up through your, the crown of your head. Feel that growth right there. 
Go through your checkpoints like we did on the other side. Checkpoint number one, shoulder. Checkpoint, num checkpoint number two, abs. Number three, rib cage. Number four, your glutes. What are they doing? Are they where they're supposed to be? Hopefully. One more time. Now staying here, hand to the back of your head, crunch the bar side, crunch the shoulder block side. Crunch the bar side, crunch the shoulder block side. Lift your hips, drop your hips. I'm bumping into the stopper every single time to make sure I'm doing my full range of movement because full range is gold standard, isn't it? Be precise. Oi, 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 four more. Four. And three. Two. Oi, 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 one more time. Four. Beautiful. Bring it back. Now get into a center kneading position and take off the red spring. Just keep the white. If now right hand is slipping in for me. It's the right hand. Maybe for you use the other. The hand away from the shoulder block. Zip, zip, zip. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Arm organized wherever you want. Just make sure you're nice and organized. And lift to the side. And lower. Stay tall. Feel like the arm is reaching out of your heart, away from center. The reason I like, recently I've been liking putting my hand on my lower back, is because I find that it instantly opens up the chest. Your collarbone is smiling straight away. So it's a good tip if you find yourself being hunched over all the time like this, then this is the best hand position for you. One more. Oi, oi, oi. Next one, 90 degree. Turn it in halfway and out halfway. Nobody likes this one except for me. Maybe you too. I hope you too. Nobody who comes to my classes likes this exercise. Wonder why. Because it burns, doesn't it? Now, as we talked on the other side, keep the elbow either below your shoulder or if you find yourself or find your elbow moving all the, all the way around, then just stick it down on your waistline and try and keep it there, kind of like you put some glue here and you glue it there. Hoi, oi, oi. Can I have one more? We can do this. Beautiful. Now make a big circle with your arms, kind of like you're hugging a tree, a big, big tree. If you're not a tree hugger, don't freak out on me. It's okay. I'm just saying it's like hugging a tree. Now, zip up that tummy, squeeze your uh, glutes super, super hard. Relax the shoulder. That's something you do not want to squeeze. Deep breath. And as you breathe out, turn around. And then turn back around. Remember, we're only twisting from the waistline up. Everything that's below the waistline right here should not be moving. See that? Now, sometimes I do this with one arm, just like this, when my shoulder is really burning from the previous exercises. And this is also definitely a level two option. It's much harder to control through the abdominals, but it also does teach you how to not do this with your arms, but with the center of your body. So if you find yourself doing this a lot, see how I'm doing it with my arm? Then that level two situation is for you because then you eliminate the arm and you have no choice but to do it correctly. It's much harder, but I love it like this. One more. Make sure you're turning both ways. Don't stop in the center. Even if your strap goes loose like this, that's okay. Next one, oh yeah, the big one. Starting from the armpit, the elbow sticking out to the side, the other arm is organized somewhere, and then open to the side, and then bring it back without moving the elbow. So again, I'm gonna show you what not to do. Don't do that. Pretend that your elbow is being squeezed in somewhere, maybe between two walls or something, and you're only able to wave around with your forearm. Oh yeah, squeeze that booty. Never not be squeezing. Mm-hmm. Very good. Now I'm gonna 
change the straps. And again, you could relax this arm down here or put it, put it back wherever is more comfortable to you. Starting with the elbow against the rib cage, and I'm bending over, big stretch, and then come back. Zip the whole time. And for me, the big one, and as I see for most people also, is the rib cage. Don't do it like this. Can you see how it's flaring out? It's open. Maybe the camera doesn't pick up on it so much, but it's really flaring. So you want to bring the rib cage in, kind of like closing a book underneath your shoulders. And see, I couldn't talk right there because intercostal muscles and all the abdominals are no way to talk. Uh, the thing we do not want here, can you guess? I think you can by now, right? Check this out. Mm, do you want to do it like this? I think not. Relax the shoulder. And as I said on the other side, I'm pushing pretty far up over my head because I like a deep stretch and I can challenge my ribcage and shoulder stability. I'm pretty flexible. But if you have to keep your arm in front of your head, for this to work, that's fine by me. Just do the way you can. Oh, that was yummy. Now step off the bed. And turning the feet out, right there, go nice and wide. As I said before, go wider than you think you need to. Drop it down to a really wide plie position, if you know what a plie is. Hands in the center of the chest, elbows up, and start shifting side to side keeping your knee open this is level one if you want to make it a level two change the strap right there it's instantly feels like it's a heavier resistance stay level no up and down just level shifting focusing on stretching the hips mm-hmm one more and now we start twisting and again, while you do this, avoid the bending over twisting, which looks like this. Yeah, try to not do that. Stay in your center and turn around your center. If you're doing it right, you're really going to feel it here. And that's okay. If it feels tight, that's why we're doing it. It's not a problem. Two more. Lovely. Good job. All right. Let's just stretch it out a little bit. Just either kneel or sit on your bed. I'm just going to give it a little stretch to one side without pushing the bed. The other. Place your hands to the back of your head. Gently pull your head forward. Breathe into the side of your mid-back right there. Try to expand the rib cage and breathe out through your mouth. One more deep breath. As you breathe out, bring it back up nice and slowly. Now we're going to place the hand on one of your ears. Place the other hand down somewhere. Ideally, you want to reach down as far as you can. Really feel that two-way stretch. With this hand, I'm reaching down. And with the other hand, I'm reaching to the opposite direction. Now move your hand behind your ear and pull your head forward. Lovely. Release the head. Other side, hand on the ear. And the other hand is reaching down. Again, you could be sitting for this. That's absolutely fine. It's even better, actually. Move your hand behind your ear 
and pull your head forward. All right, thank you so much. You did great today. I hope to see you at my next video and click subscribe and check out my other videos. I'll see you at the next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.